I will now request Mr. Martin Griffiths, Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, who is representing UN Secretary General Mr. Guterres to come to the rostrum and deliver his remarks. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Excellencies, friends and colleagues, it's my privilege here to represent the Secretary General of the United Nations who wishes he could also have been here, but the words that I will speak are his. As the Honorable Minister of Pakistan has already said, <clears throat> I have spoken elsewhere of the fact that Afghanistan's economy is now in free fall and that if we don't act decisively and with compassion, I fear that this fall will pull down the entire population with it. 23 million people are already facing hunger. Health facilities are overflowing with malnourished children. Some 70% of teachers are not getting paid, and millions of children, Afghanistan's future, are out of school. The value of the Afghani currency is plummeting. Trade is damaged by the lack of confidence in the financial sector, as we have heard, and the space for borrowing and investment has constricted dramatically. So the need for liquidity and stabilization of the banking system, again, as we have heard from a number of speakers, is now urgent, not only to save the lives of the Afghan people, but also to enable humanitarian organizations to respond and operate effectively. I welcome the decision by the World Bank's Afghanistan Reconstruction Trust Fund to transfer 280 million US dollars by the end of December to UNICEF and the World Food Program. This step should be followed by reprogramming of the whole fund to support the people of Afghanistan this winter. Families simply do not have the cash for everyday transactions. While prices for key commodities continue to rise, the cost of wheat and fuel are up by around 40%. And food now accounts, accounts for more than 80% of average household expenditure. Basic social services that all Afghans depend on are collapsing as international development support, upon which the country has depended for so long, has frozen up. By the middle of next year, as estimated by UNDP, universal poverty may reach 97% of the population of Afghanistan. That could be the next grim milestone. Within a year, 30% of Afghanistan's GDP could be lost altogether, could be, while male unemployment may double to 29%. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is coming today together to express the willingness, as we have heard, to help avert this disaster and to contribute to the humanitarian endeavor. And I am here to say, Excellencies, that the United Nations stands firmly with you and your efforts and your plans, and both of us in solidarity with the people of Afghanistan. Next year, the United Nations will seek funding for the largest ever appeal for humanitarian assistance for a country, an annual appeal of about $4.5 billion to help the most vulnerable in Afghanistan with life-saving assistance. But our plan is a stopgap measure for over 21 million people who need that assistance. Of course, 
it must be funded as a matter of priority. But the crisis is huge. The humanitarian response is effective and it continues to scale up. And thanks to generous donor support, the Afghanistan response plan for 2021 was fully funded, a unique achievement in these years. But going forward, we need more than this. Afghanistan will not get through the winter on emergency aid alone, again, as has been said by previous speakers. We also need flexible donor funding that can be used to ensure salaries for public sector workers and support to basic services such as health, education, electricity, livelihoods, to allow the people of Afghanistan some chance to get through this winter and some encouragement to remain home with their families. Going forward, we also need constructive engagement with the de facto authorities in a process of meaningful dialogue to clarify what we expect of each other. The consequences of inaction on these three fronts are clear, and the three fronts are emergency assistance, flexible funding, and an engagement to be clear about what we expect from each other. And if we do not act fast on these three fronts, we know that we risk the collapse of this great country, and people will run out of hope, and the region, and indeed the world, will see destabilization increase with all the consequences that we have seen so clearly in history. Honorable Prime Minister, we're gathered here today at a moment of exceptional gravity for the people of Afghanistan. We have the advantage of being forewarned of the fate that awaits them if we do not act. We have the responsibility, because we are forewarned, knowing that if we do not act with urgency and with a collective will, there will be a terrible reckoning. We have that chance. We have that opportunity given to us also by those who convened this important international meeting. We cannot fail to do what is right and what we know is possible. Thank you.